Hi everyone, I'm Nate with the Lehigh Valley Rose Society, and today we're going to be talking about soil pH. Most of the time, when gardeners think about pH for soil, they think about hydrangeas, azaleas, or blueberries. However, all plants have a preferred range for pH of the soil. Our video today will focus on the pH range ideal for roses. Now you may be saying, I remember a little bit about pH from high school chemistry, but please refresh my memory. Soil pH is defined as the acidity or alkalinity of the soil. pH is an abbreviation that stands for the potential for hydrogen. That's the pH. A soil pH test determines the amount of hydrogen ion activity occurring in the soil and is expressed as a number ranging from one, which is extremely uh, acidic, to 14, which is extremely alkaline. Seven is considered neutral. Ideally, the soil pH range for roses is from 6 to 6.5, which is considered slightly acidic. If the pH falls below 6, there is decreased availability in the primary macronutrients, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, as well as the secondary macronutrients, which are sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. At a pH of 5.5, there is reduced soil microbial activity as well. When the pH is higher than 7.5, which is alkaline, plants will struggle to absorb the micronutrients, such as magnesium, iron, boron, copper, and zinc. So you can have all of those great nutrients in your soil and be fertilizing on a regular basis, but it does you no good if your soil pH is too acidic or too alkaline. That's why testing your soil is so important. Don't just test for the macronutrients, which is what most people check for, but test for the pH as well. There are home test kits, and I have two examples here. This digital one, which you insert into the soil near where you want to test, and you have to clean it off each time. And it gives you a digital reading on the screen here. Or there's also these tests where you mix a little bit of soil in the container, water, and one of these tablets. And then it'll be a range of colors that most closely line up to the pH level of your soil. So both of these are good options for aquarium kits. But for a more comprehensive option for our area, you can take a collection of soil from various points in your yard and put it into a bag and send it off to Penn State where they will do soil tests for you. Um, you can pick up soil sample kits from the Lehigh County Agricultural Center, which is on Dorney Park Road in Allentown, or if you're in Northampton County, you can pick it up at their office on Graysdale Avenue in Nazareth. Um, we reached out to Penn State, and we're hoping that we will be able to carry the test kits in the near future as well. Um, we bought our home in October of 2020, and the section of our backyard that is not covered by a concrete patio is roughly 16 feet by 49 feet, so it's a fairly small yard. Um, when we bought the house, the backyard consisted of a concrete patio off of the back of the house, a chain link fence down both sides that was covered in English ivy, a, um, a pretty overgrown lilac bush that was um, in front of our garage windows, and then there was a narrow concrete sidewalk down the center of the yard with grass on either side. Apart from that lilac and apart from the English ivy, there were no other plants.
We did virtually everything in the yard ourselves over the past couple of months, but we did hire someone to remove the grass and to remove the sidewalk. And specifically when they removed the sidewalk, they did remove as much debris as they could, but there were still small chunks of concrete and concrete dust, quite a bit of concrete dust left in the soil. And I said to Tess when that happened, this is going to mess up our soil pH. And it did. <laughs> um, concrete specifically has a fairly high pH level. It's very alkaline. And that is because of the cement that is mixed into the concrete um, that binds the, the concrete together. It contains a large amount of alkalis and it, um, as it dissolves in the water, it imparts that high pH to the concrete overall. And when I say high, think of like 13, so near the top of the, top of the range. Um, recently, I tested the pH of our yard and in various points, it was anywhere from 7.2, which is slightly alkaline, up to 8.5. Um, so definitely higher uh, the range than it should be. And the way that I noticed this visually in our yard was um, something in the roses called chlorosis, which is the yellowing, um, or it can be like a light green or even um, like a lime green color on the tissue, but um, the intervenal tissue, which is the, the tissue of the leaves in between the veins. Um, you can see on, it's interesting to note because basically right down the center of the yard where the sidewalk was, are the roses that display the most chlorosis. So if you wanna zoom in over here at Tottering by Gently, you'll notice how this is almost a lime green on the leaves. And then if you want to look here at the poet's wife, you'll notice the same sort of lime green intervenal tissue. And over here on the lark ascending, it's the same as well. And that pathway is right where the concrete sidewalk went down the yard. So um, chlorosis can be caused by a couple different things. Uh, it can be caused by pH that is too high. It can be caused by a lack of iron. But this is interesting to note that um, iron is less available for roses when the pH is high, so they kind of go hand in hand. Um, or it can also be caused by overwatering or poor, um, poorly drained soil. Other um, micronutrients can also be the cause if the levels of zinc, manganese, or copper are too high. That can also cause chlorosis. So again, tested the soil in various spots and it was too alkaline. Um, to lower the pH of the soil, you can add aluminum sulfate or you can add sulfur, plain sulfur. Um, if you have the opposite problem and you need to raise your soil pH, then you'll want some form of lime, which you can get pulverized, granular, pelletized, or hydrated. Um, instructions depend on your soil type, so either um, clay, sandy, silty, or loamy, and they also depend on the current pH level of your yard. So um, again, the instructions based off of those different options will be on the back of the packet of um, whatever you purchase. If you do not know the type of your soil, that is again something that I would suggest sending a sample into Penn State for. Um, you can select that as an optional add-on test. Apart from the nutrients, they can also tell you your soil type. So today we are going to be adding aluminum sulfate to the yard. I like to use Bonide products, so I'm using Bonide's Garden Rich Aluminum Sulfate today. On the back of the packet, it gives you a chart to adjust the pH depending on the pH level and the type of soil you have, sandy, loamy, or clay. However, this chart is specifically to reduce the pH level to five, which is lower than we want. The aim is more towards hydrangeas. Um, so you'll have to make some adjustments to that chart. Uh, I went to the University of Wisconsin's Extension Office website, and they recommend that for established plants to use no more than two cups per plant incorporate it into the soil and water well and then check it 
continually check the pH level every two weeks and add more treatments as necessary until the desired pH level is reached. So um, I have some pre-measured and it is right here. I mixed it specifically with a little iron oxide because our um, soil samples tested as iron deficient in addition to the high pH level. So I have a little bit of iron oxide here and the aluminum sulfate and I'm going to add it around the base of this rose and then we're going to work it into the soil and thoroughly water it. So I'm kind of digging a trench here to pull the, the mulch away. And now that I have that trench in place, I'm going to sprinkle this around the base. Now I'm burying it back under this mulch here. And then we're going to water it in. So that's one rose down and 46 more in the backyard to go. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments on our YouTube channel, or you can email us at info at lvrosociety.org. And be sure to check out our other videos. We'll keep adding videos about pest and disease identification, planting and transplanting roses, pruning, fertilizing, and more. Thanks for joining us today.